True Crime Never Sleeps podcast. I'm your host, Larry Lace. And on today's episode of Cold Case Friday, we dive into the murder on a train that was never solved. The murder of Elizabeth Camp. But first, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Pondex, for sponsoring this episode. If you're a podcaster who can grow your audience or get more engagement, come check out Pondex at pondex.com. And use the promo code Larry21 for 10% off your order. And of course, Audible. Visit audibletrial.com slash Larry21 if you want a free audiobook of your choice. With no purchase necessary, head on over to audibletrial.com slash Larry21. Now let's dive into today's topic. On the evening of February 11th, 1897, a train pulled into Waterloo Station in London, and one of the second-class carriages pushed under the seats was the dead body of a woman. The female was well-dressed with a wound to her head. No weapon was found in the compartment. From the crime scene, it became clear that the woman had put up a fight before being murdered. Police also found a set of cufflinks in the compartment. The body was taken to the mortuary where an inquest would be held. Identification of the body came quickly. Waiting at the train station had been the woman's fiance when he saw the incident. He went to the hospital where he identified the victim. The murdered woman was Miss Elizabeth Kemp, a barmaid who worked in the Good and Tent Tavern in Walworth. The South Wales Echo later that day told of the brutal and deliberate crime that had occurred against this woman. A sharp weapon causing injuries, her head had been lacerated and battered. The body had been warm on discovery, indicating that she had been killed close to Waterloo. However, by the time an examination at the local St. Thomas's Hospital, the woman had passed away. Mr. Berry, Kemp's fiance, stated that she was employed as the manageress at the Good Tent. She had a good reputation there and was popular with the customers. Before, before starting this profession, she also had been a nurse for one of the hospitals in London. On the day of her murder, she had visited her sister and brother-in-law in Hammersmith. She had arranged to meet Barry as she returned on the 2025 train. After leaving her sisters in the afternoon, she went to a shop in Hounslow. Here, she met her other sister, who she helped work her with chores before getting on the train for home. Kemp had been seeing Edward Berry for a while. The couple had a brief period apart when it was rumored that Kemp was seeing another man. Unfortunately, no one knew the identity of this man. When the relationship ended, she returned to Barry. Barry had his shop opposite the Good Intent pub. He was distressed by his fiancée's death and willing to give all the information he could. Unfortunately, the couple's wedding was only a month away. The last time Barry saw her was at noon when she told him she was using her half day to visit relatives. A search of the railway line after the murder, investigators came across a chemist's pistol. On the bowl were blood and hair. It was found lying between two earlier stations. The police had the murder weapon, but no motive for the killing. Kemp's brooch, earrings, and silver-mounted umbrella were found on the body. Her sister commented that she had put Kemp in an empty second-class carriage. This indicated that the assailant had entered the carriage after the train left. She also stated that she did not think the cufflinks found belonged to her sister, as she wore gold ones, not bone ones. The inquest into the murder occurred on February 20th, 1897. It was revealed that the murder had caused terror amongst women traveling the line. Once identification of the body was carried out, the coroner adjourned the in inquiry for a month to enable a full investigation to start. It was also confirmed that fatal injuries had been inflicted by the pestle found on the railway line. A store dealer had come, up, come forward and stated that he sold a pestle to a man similar to the one used to kill Miss Kemp in the public house where she worked. The murder also questioned the safety of box carriages, where women sat with no protection from a guard boxed up in the corner. So who killed Miss Kemp? The inquest passed a ruling of, quote, willful murder against some person or persons unknown. The case remained unsolved. Like the other famous Victorian murders, there was a suspect, but the police were late informing the Metropolitan Police. Therefore, he was not arrested. The case also highlighted many problems with investigations, such as the area not being cordoned off when a murder occurred. 
The press, having announced the murder using the name of Miss Camp, changed the narrative for the next hundred years, as the murder is known as the murder of Miss Camp to many. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. Who do you think is the murder suspect? And if you want to follow us, you can find us on Twitter and Facebook. Um, subscribe to the podcast and all major podcast platforms. Check us out on um, <clears throat> Good Pods, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all your other favorite podcast platforms. And as always, thank you so much for watching and listening. We will see you next time.